I got a very nice letter from a, a very sweet lady. She wrote in and said, some of my favorite podcasts are of you and Jim Mars. Now, here's the part you're going to like. The content of your talk is irrelevant. It's just so wonderful listening to the two of you chat with each other. I imagine that you're sitting together in the late evening at the kitchen table, and I'm listening just out of view. It's just so soothing. Now, it doesn't get any nicer than that. Did you open one for me during the break? Oh, yeah. Thank you. I told you I went to a high school play. Slasher. They're making a slasher movie, you know, and they, they stab and cut and run around and I don't know. So, That's nice. Uh, you see, isn't that nice, our young people? See, yeah, this goes back to what I said about Lady Gag. It's, it's, her outfit was celebratory of death slaughter and mutilation. I'm sorry, that's the message. You yep. can't cut up living things and wear them in front of 100 million people and not get the idea that there's a message there. That wasn't just a prank. There's more to this. Now, Lady Gag may not even have known it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. They're useless, you know, useful and, idiots. But I can remember my junior high school play we put on, and it was Charlie's Aunt. Okay. There you and, go. Today, I'm sure the kids would go, oh, gag me with a spoon. I, you know, I don't want to watch that. But hey, it was funny, okay? It was actually funny. It's still funny, actually. It's a funny play. I think what you have to do is simply look at the end result. You know, Do we have a calmer, more peaceful, more genteel society today? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> I'm sorry. There are some really wonderful young people who mean well, oh, yeah. but they, they don't have much of a chance because the, the pressure upon them to have friends and be socially mobile and to be cool yeah. is so overwhelming now and so insidiously penetrating at every possible level. These kids do not, by and large, have a chance. Even junior high kids today have computers. So as exactly. a generation, they have access to more information than ever before in human history. You know, just my lifetime, when I was a teenager, you know, if I wanted to learn something outside of school, you had to go to the library and spend all afternoon, read books. Card catalog. Go to the card catalog. It was a, it was work. In one way, I can kind of understand why, you know, it's a whole lot easier to sit home and tap a computer key, but, but they're not doing that. In fact, you know, tests, studies have shown that, you know, they're, they're, dumber than ever before, and yet they have unparalleled access to information. Dumber and than ever before? They're going to die sooner than their parents, first generation in history? Dumber? Die sooner? Now, here's the paradox, James. They have, as you just said, access to more information than any other generation in history. And yet, this diet, I call it the amphetamine audio video diet. You cannot expose a child of one or two or three to commercial television, which has commercials in which a 30-second commercial will appear 50 to 60 different scenes, all moving camera shots for the most part, sound that doesn't cease. These kids get so wired up on having input at that level that now... Adult commercials, and they've had these kids for two generations now, adult commercials are being cut down to 15 seconds. Oh, I know part of it's a reflection upon the condition of the society and its financial issues. But the attention span of people is so short now. This is part of the mass programming. It's all about keeping these kids multitasking in their minds all the time, and so when you try to slow them down, when thought occurs, they can't get there. That's what it's all about, is blocking the basic proactive thought process of the mind and creating generation after generation, they've got two and a half now, of reactive consuming droids. And they're <coughs> praising Computers, wow, you get to multitask. Look, they can get so much more done. B.S., it shuts down the thought centers. 
because you're constantly doing it's like you're playing three Wurlitzer keyboards at the same time. So how are you going to compose music? Well, again, it's social engineering. But they also have a solution. It's called the off button. Try and take the cell phone away from your 12-year-old. <laughs> you, you want your house burned down? <laughs> All right. Be back. And, and, then, and then when you discipline, they turn you into child protective service. Easy. <laughs> or the kid will just make the call and save the house, and you're just taken away. All right, we'll be back. <laughs> 